Hello and welcome back. The next part of the solution of transportation problem maximization case. Yes, in the last lecture we have arrived at the modified allocation or modified solution because the initial solution was not the optimal one. So we used MODI method and made the reallocation. This is the modified solution. And according to modified solution, the total profit comes to 15,300 rupees, which was 15,180 rupees according to the initial solution. So we have moved forward to the maximum possible profit. But the question now again is whether this is the optimal solution or not. Again the test of optimality, we have to calculate DIJ values, but to calculate DIJ values, we need the dual of this transportation problem. For that purpose, we need to write U, I and V, J values. Okay, now to write the U, I and V, J values, we have to take any one of U or V as zero. As I suggested in the previous lecture, we it is advisable rather to take zero where the lower column is, is with the highest proportion of occupied cell. In this, one out of three, only 33%, two out of three, 67%, one out of three, 33%, two out of three, 67%. There is time between these two columns, but let us check rows. One out of four, only 25% rejected. Two out of four, 50% rejected. 3 out of 4 that is 75 percent so I personally prefer and advise to select this row and write the relevant U value that is U3 as 0. This is not hard and fast rule but please treat this as a thumb rule. This will ease your process. Now with the help of this U and 3 occupied cells in the same row we can write the relevant values of V. Just for reference, relationship between C and U and V is like this. Okay, now we are going to use this formula, but for occupied cells only. Yes, take this occupied cell in this column. Uh, v equals to C minus U. C 11 minus U 0. So V 1 will be 11. This column V3 C 14 minus relevant U 0 so it comes to 14. This column C is 5 relevant U 0 5 minus 0 is 5. Okay now <clears throat> with the help of these three VJ values and the occupied cell in the same column we can find out the remaining two values of UI respectively U1 and U2. Okay take this Take this and this occupied cell. U equals to C minus V. C is 7. V is 5. 7 minus 5. U2 comes to 2. 2 positive. Okay. Now what? With the help of this U and this occupied cell, we can write this value of V. V equals to C minus U. C 18. U2. So V2 comes to 16. Okay, now what? We can use this value of V2 and this occupied cell to find the value of U1. U equals to C minus V. C7 minus V2 is 16. 7 minus 16 it comes to minus 9. So now we have all VI and U, uh, sorry, UI and VJ values. We can move forward. What is the next stage? Next stage is to calculate DIJ values for all the non-occupied or empty cells. The formula for DIJ values for all non-occupied or empty cells will be DIJ equals to CIJ minus UI plus VJ. Okay, first unoccupied or empty cell is 1A, D1A. Relevant C is 13, minus sign according to formula, relevant UI is minus 9, plus sign according to formula, and relevant V is 11. 
so it will be 13 minus minus 9 plus 11 is 2 so it comes to 11 positive yes next d 1 c relevant c is 19 19 minus sign according to formula bracket relevant u again minus 9 plus sign according to formula relevant c relevant v is 14 so it is 19 minus minus 9 plus 14 is 5 so ultimately it comes to 14 positive again d 1 d that will be c is 0 plus sign sorry minus sign according to formula relevant u is still minus 9 because it is first row plus sign according to formula and relevant v is 5 so 0 minus minus 9 plus 5 is minus 4 0 minus minus 4 is 0 plus 4 so it is again positive ok now it is turn of this cell this empty cell to A B4 to A it will be C17 minus sign according to formula relevant U is 2 plus sign according to formula relevant V is 11 so it is 17 minus 13 again positive 4 now D yes 2C D2C relevant C for this cell is 15 minus sign according to formula U 2 and relevant V is 14 15 minus 16 it is minus 1 it is minus 1 at this stage we have obtained negative value but we have to calculate DIJ value for this cell also this is not the end point it might be again negative and if there are two or more empty cells with negative DIJ values we have to select the cell with the greatest number with negative sign to start the closed loop. So let us calculate for this. I wrongly indicated this one. This is empty cell and that is D3 B C 22 minus sign according to formula relevant U is 0 plus sign according to formula relevant V is 16. So 22 minus 16 it comes to a positive. So we have again a DIJ value which is negative. So we can say that this modified solution is also not an optimal solution. Now what? The role of closed loop. We have only one cell with negative sign. Let us select it. And now we all know the rules of closed, drawing closed loop very well. Yes, we can start from this, we can go to left, right, upper, lower, any side, but to take the turn, we must have occupied cell. So, we can go either to this stage or to this, from here to here, but there will be no again uh, turning point available with occupied cell, so it is not advisable to go there. So, the simple way we can see is this path either clockwise or anti-clockwise that's not a greater problem so let us start with this positive sign in the starting point yes next day negative sign next again positive sign next negative sign and now it is over now select the cells with negative sign these two Check the quantity of allocation, 380 and 100. Select the lowest one, 100. Now what? We have to subtract this 100 lower out of the two cells with negative from these two cells with negative sign and we have to add that 100 in these two cells with positive signs. So it will be like this. Now, in the next lecture, I will present the revised table with modified allocation again. Yes, for this lecture, 
That's it. Thank you very much.